Hello and welcome back. Let's see if we can add a realistic looking tier uh, in this tutorial in Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and open up your image in Adobe Photoshop like I've done here. Go over to your layers palette. If it's not up by default, go up to window, down to layers and click on that and that should open it up for you. First thing that we want to do is make a copy of this background layer. So we're going to press Control J on our keyboard to do that with that layer selected, of course. Or you could click on this layer and drag it down into the new layer button. That also does the same thing. I'll press Control Z to get rid of that one since we only need really one copy. Once again, um, like I've said before in the past, the reason that we do that is, is so that we have an original background copy that we can go back to in case for some reason we destroy this layer. We shouldn't be dealing with that in this tutorial. This tutorial is completely non-destructive, and I'll show you why right now. Because uh, the first thing that we want to do is click on that uh, layer copy that we made, and we want to zoom in on the area that we want to uh, create the tier. So we'll go over to our toolbar on the left and click our zoom tool and zoom in on that right eye of the guy here, okay? And we'll just kind of position the canvas the way that we want to. The next thing that we want to do actually is make another layer, a brand new layer. So we'll go over to our layer palette and click on that new layer button, and we're going to rename that tier. And we'll press enter to successfully rename that. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is select our pen tool. You can press the P on the keyboard, or you can go over to your tool palette and select it right there, okay? We want to draw our tier shape. So I'm going to draw it from this side of the eye, I'm going to start skinny at the beginning and kind of get fatter towards the end, okay? And I'm just going to click in a couple different spots and drag that anchor out a little bit to um, soften up the edge a little bit. And I kind of want to try to follow the contours of the face a little bit. Okay, and I'll just do one more point down here to make it kind of a longer one. Like I said, I want to get a little bit uh, fatter towards the end so I can kind of make this a little bit bigger. You can kind of do whatever shape that you want because tiers are not perfect. So it doesn't you don't need extremely great pen tools to do this. But just try to follow the outline and get a little bit smaller as you're going back towards the top. So it creates kind of a droplet sort of shape. Okay. So I have kind of this sort of shape. I don't know if you can see that very well, but uh, I'm going to fill it in right now. Um, so that you will be able to see it. So the next thing we want to do is select, a, make sure we have our tier layer selected. Go up at the top here and select paths. Um, if that's not there, it's probably under window as well. Yeah, it is. So if you don't see that paths, click on window, go down to paths, and that'll pull that up. You want to click on this uh, this little thing that says work path, and you want to turn that into a, a path by um, uh, clicking on this little ant sort of circle in the middle. And that'll uh, turn it into a selection, okay? Next thing that we want to do is fill that with black. So uh, you have your default colors. If you don't, click on this little default color selector thing uh, right above your colors, and that'll, uh, that'll put default uh, black as your foreground color. We'll go up to edit at the top, go down to fill, and fill with the foreground color, OK? That's what we want. So if that's not selected, you click on the drop down and select foreground color, and press OK. And now you have, uh, you have it set to black there. So you can press Control D to get rid of your selection. And go back over here to where you have your path selected and uh, click on layers to go back to your layers. Okay. And now that we have our basic tier shape, we just have to do some, uh, some settings here. Okay. Uh, the first thing that I want to do actually is change the blending mode to this uh, on this layer to screen. And that's just going to make it so that our tier is not completely black. And you don't even see anything right now, but believe me, you will here in a little bit. Okay. So uh, go ahead and double click on that tier layer to open up your layer styles. Move it a little bit over from where your um, your tier is going to be, and then um, then go ahead and click on a few of these these layer styles. So I'm going to go ahead and click on drop shadow, uh, inner shadow. I want an inner glow. We're just going to click all the check boxes that apply here. Uh, I want a bevel and emboss, and I want a gradient overlay. Okay. And as you can see, that doesn't really look like a, a good tier right now. So we're going to have to go ahead and go up and change some of the settings here. So I'm going to click on the drop shadow one. I'm going to move this over more in the center of the screen, actually. So I'm going to start with the drop shadow. I'm going to set it to multiply. And then I'm going to click on the color. And I'm going to change that color to uh, one that I have actually found earlier. I'm going to set it to A88379. And that's just kind of like a brownish color. Actually, I think I want to go a little bit more brown so that it looks uh, a little darker, okay? So it's uh, 8F, 5F, 5, 2, okay? 
And then I'll press OK over here. I'm going to change the, uh, the opacity down to about 10%, uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe around like 5% or so. No, let's stick with 10 so we can actually see it. And then we'll, uh, we're going to change the angle to 90. We're not going to use global light. We're going to change the distance to 2, the spread to 1, and then the size to 2, and the rest is going to stay the same. We're going to go down to inner shadow now, and we're going to change some of the settings there. We're going to keep the uh, blending mode set to multiply. We're going to change the color to uh, something that I found before as well, A15340. And I'm going to go ahead and stick with that one and I'll press OK. We're going to change the opacity down to 6. We're going to change the, uh, the angle is going to stay the same. We're going to not use global light though. We're going, so click off on global light and make sure that angle stays 90. And then uh, we're going to set the distance to 7. The choke will stay 0 and we're going to keep the size 7. And then we will keep the rest the same. So now I'm going to go down to inner glow. And... I'm going to set the blending mode on the inner glow to overlay. I want the opacity on this layer to be 4. I want to change the color here to a black color. Sorry if I'm going too fast, but uh, if you need to, go ahead and press pause or go back in the video and uh, check out these settings. I'm going to change the, uh, the size down here to 3, and that's the only thing I'm changing there. And then I'm going to change the range and the quality down here to uh, 40%. And then I'll go ahead and go on to my uh, bevel and emboss. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I want to do on the bevel and emboss is I want to keep an inner bevel. I want to keep it smooth. I want to change the depth to 70%. I want to change the, uh, the size to 3 pixels. I want to change the angle up here to 45 degrees. And then I'm going to go ahead and keep the global light on here. And I'm going to change this to 60 degrees for the altitude. And then uh, down here, I'm going to keep the, the highlight mode to screen, but I want to change it to 27% uh, percent opacity. And the shadow mode, I'll keep it as multiply and change it to 15%, though. And then uh, we're ready to go on to the gradient overlay, and this will be the last one, okay? So we're going to change that blending mode to multiply. And then we're going to click on... Uh, well, we can change our opacity to 6%, and that's already starting to look more like a tier now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click on our gradient because we want to change the gradient from going to black to opaque. We're going to change the location on this white one at the top. The location, I want it to be uh, 26. And then the same thing with the bottom one. I want to change the location to 26. So it's just a little bit more uh, close there. And I'll click OK. OK. I want to keep uh, the rest of the settings the same here. OK. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. Um, as you can see, that doesn't look extremely realistic right now. We might want to add a little bit more white highlights. Um, I mean, it's looking pretty good, but we might want to add a little bit more white highlights to it. So I think what I'll do is I'm actually going to add another layer, and I'm going to call it Highlights. And I'll press Enter, and then I'm going to select my Brush Tool. I'm going to make the uh, go up to the top to this drop-down. I'm going to make the size uh, 1 pixel. Hardness, I'm going to go up to 100%, and then I'm going to uh, go to my colors, and I'm going to move uh, my foreground color to being white. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of click along the inside edge here and make some white dots on the right side, pretty much. And I can kind of go be pretty loose with this, um, but I kind of want to do something sort of like this, I think. And then um, simply what I want to do now is on that, I want to go, um, I want to apply a blur to this, um, this effect to make it just look a little bit more real. So I'll go up to filter, down to blur, probably do a Gaussian blur on it. And I'll move that over to the side to kind of see what it's looking like. That blur is completely removing my style there, so I just want to kind of bump it up until it looks pretty good. Maybe something kind of like that. And I'll click OK. Now, if, uh, if you think your tier is a little bit too sharp as well, you can add a very, very slight blur to that. So you can click on your tier layer, go up to Filter, down to Blur, and you could add uh, a Gaussian blur to that, or maybe, maybe a Smart Blur or a Surface Blur might work a little bit better. Okay, so our radius, we can bump that up a little bit, our threshold. Let's go ahead and, actually I'm going to cancel, oh, no, that, that's looking pretty good. It just took a little bit of time to, uh, to preview, okay? So we can bump our threshold up until it looks 
pretty good. I'm sorry, it's, it is taking a couple seconds to preview here. So I'll just tell you what my settings are though after I get it looking pretty good. About 100 on the threshold and uh, the radius I have set to about 40. And then I'll click OK. And that just kind of softens up the edges a little bit, uh, makes it look like a little bit more realistic. Now if at this point we zoom out and you can't see it very well, you kind of can. Actually it looks pretty good. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stop there. If you want to, you can add more of these or you can add um, bigger ones or uh, tear drops to the face and uh, and you'll have a pretty good realistic looking tear. If it's not very realistic and it's too harsh looking, try to dull the opacity down a little bit, maybe to 80 percent and uh, that's looking pretty good too. So uh, there you go. This tutorial's over. I hope uh, I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click the like button on YouTube. Please uh, uh, like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And thanks for watching.